Hello, this is Jackie with Jackie Sweet Shapes. Welcome to Jackie Sweet Schoolhouse. We are going to get started in about five minutes. Uh, so if you are scrolling through, welcome. You can stay on if you would like. Um, thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. um, if you are taking the class on YouTube, of course, uh, you can fast forward. Um, we have a new setup here. We've got the mic, the cameras, fancy, fancy. Um, so this is a new setup that we are trying out tonight, first time. Um, we are going to be going towards a platform, my like own platform kind of stream. So in the 2020, which is literally only a month away, uh, we are going to be doing classes on like a, a website and not on Facebook, which will be better quality. Uh, so hopefully y'all enjoy this. We've got the mic, which hopefully sounds better. And this is one cookie that we're doing for our winter class. We are actually doing four cookies. So there are a few of you who will be hopping on taking this class who ordered a cookie kit. And so, I don't even know if you can see all those, but <laughs> we've got a tree. It's our winter themed class. We've got a snowflake. Nice and pretty. We have a mug with a, actually this is another cookie on top. Uh, so, that's two cookies in one. Just something different. I don't think I've ever actually done that before. And then we have our little snowman. All right, so I cannot see any of you. So if you are taking the class and you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment. I will see them as we go and I can respond. Uh, comments, questions, you name it. If you're taking the class on YouTube, obviously you won't be able to comment. So uh, hopefully, you know, if you have any questions, you can email me, message me, uh, whatever to get in contact with me. The nice thing about YouTube is that you can fast forward, uh, pause, go at your own pace. And so if that if you're coming on and you're taking the class live and you decide this is too fast paced for me, then uh, just pause wherever you're at and then I will be posting that YouTube video tonight and it'll probably be available by uh, tomorrow morning because it takes a good uh, five hours at least um, to upload. So, yep, we've got a few people on, and we will get started here in a few minutes. If you are taking the class, make sure you have a pair of scissors. That'll be important, the only thing that is not included in your kit. And if you have not already, go ahead and massage um, each of the icing bags. Let's see, today is Friday. So we made these on Monday. Um, we baked the cookies on Monday as well, um, so that just means it's been a, you know, a few days uh, that they haven't been used. So we want to just kind of massage a little bit. The icing likes to separate from the water, like the, the color and the water will kind of separate over time. So especially if you're, if you're taking this class, like if you purchased your kit, I sent it to you, but you're taking it a little bit later, you're going to just want to make sure you massage uh, each icing bag for you know about a minute or so um, so I'm just gonna do that as I'm waiting for people to hop on here just to kind of be ready and then if you are taking the class go ahead and take everything out of your box if you haven't already all of your cookies your eight icing bags your two containers of sprinkles um, your napkins toothpicks uh, piping worksheets uh, just everything I just realized I didn't have my toothpicks so. out all right so if you're on and you're taking the class I'd love to hear from you let me know how you're doing is it cold wherever you are does it feel like winter are you excited for Christmas which is like 19 days away. Insane. 
I am excited, but I don't feel ready because I just feel like it is going by so fast. And uh, we're coming to Baton Rouge for four cookie decorating classes. And I'm looking at the calendar and it's like a week and a half away, which is whew, crazy. But I'm excited to see y'all if you're gonna be there. Excited to decorate some cookies with you. Um, we have Christmas cookies and then I have a class that's a uh, gingerbread house making party, which will be super fun. And that's my first time I've done that, but I've made gingerbread houses when I was like a kid, but never taught a class, so that'll be loads of fun. Okay, I just went ahead and massaged my icing bags. I have the same ones that y'all have, so whatever was shipped to you i have the same exact one same exact consistencies um, so no difference i'm experiencing the same thing that you do while i am doing this class yeah hot right everybody's saying it's hot it does not well so if you're in the south like most of y'all are um, and i am as well it's pretty warm but i will say i woke up this morning and I was volunteering this morning and I got out of the house and it was like 39 degrees and I was like this is freezing and so but literally like three hours later it went back up to 75 so I just almost like couldn't believe that it was like 30 degrees in a couple hours no way crazy okay so it is 731 so we can get started. Uh, here's how we're gonna do this. So the way that you see your screen right now is how you're gonna see it for the whole class. So that's kind of cool. You'll be able to see me the whole time, um, but I will not be looking at the camera. I will be looking at my workstation. So uh, you will see everything that I'm doing. I probably really shouldn't be throwing around these scissors. You will see everything that I'm doing. We are going to start with about a five to 10 minute explanation on the icings and how to hold the bag, uh, how to do your outlining, which is the hardest part, which also is uh, the detailing too. So we'll practice that a little bit. If you've taken the class with me before, you kind of know the drill. It's going to be the same, uh, just doing different cookies than you know previous times. The whole outline is the same. So we'll do the worksheet, so explanation, worksheet, we will start on the outlining and the flooding of all the cookies. We'll take a little break in the middle at some point um, and we will have door prizes. You can also ask questions during that time. Feel free during that time to you know take a break, get up, walk around. Um, if you need to, go to the bathroom, get some water. And, and then when we come back, it'll only be about five minutes. When we come back, we'll do all of the detailing. We'll finish it up. We will decorate five of these cookies in about five hours, or sorry, five hours. No, in two hours. <laughs> so two hours, it does sometimes take that long to decorate cookies. Of course, this is a class, so it's a little different. But if you've never decorated cookies before, you will see that it does take a pretty long time to decorate cookies. So it takes patience, but I do want you to enjoy yourself, have fun. You know, if this is new for you, awesome. If you love it come back and see me. Uh, we have virtual classes like two to three times a month and it'll be like that in 2020. We'll have a bunch of classes each month. So let's do that five minute explanation and we will get started here. Okay, so first things first. Uh, you have a parchment little paper in your kit. I want you to spread that out. It gets very messy, so we want to have that laid out ready to catch any of the icings and the crumbs that might happen. Napkins I like to put actually on my lap. Um, so as we go, the oxygen makes the the oxygen uh, gets exposed or the icing gets exposed to the oxygen and it can cause it to crust a little bit or dry up so i just use my napkin as we go and i sometimes wipe it off so you'll see me do that as needed okay then we have um some of them have a one on it so we want to kind of pull these and i actually went ahead and put a one on all of the ones that were thick icing 
So your thick icings are most of them except for three. So you have three that are thinner. The uh, brown is a medium consistency, so you can basically outline and flood with this brown. It's not too thin, it's not too thick, it's somewhere in the middle. So just, you know, you can remember that for the future. Um, if you're making icings and you want to just do one, you don't want to have to deal with both consistencies, you can do a medium consistency. And um, I actually have a class that I'm going to be doing in January, and it's going to be a Royal Icing 101 class, and I will explain in great detail all of the consistencies. So if you're interested in that, just look out for that. I'll be posting it pretty soon in the next week or so. So that's a medium consistency. Then you have your big bag of white icing has a lot because, uh, let's see, three, no, four of our cookies are gonna get white icing. So we had to give you a whole lot because pr they're pretty much all gonna get white icing. This is the thin one, thin consistency. Then you have the light blue, which is thin consistency. Okay, then you have your thick ones that have a one on it. So remember, these ones are thicker for outlining and, f and uh, detailing. They don't just kind of run when you put it on the cookie. It stays, uh, you know, pretty thick as you put it on. It dries pretty quickly as well. So just have your ones that have a one, kind of put those off to the right or the left to distinguish from the other ones. So you'll have the thin ones on the left or the right, and then the thick ones on the other side. Okay, so I will explain a little bit more as we go, but I do want you to pull out your worksheet because we're gonna do this first. And how about we grab our thick white. So remember, it's the one that has a little Sharpie line on it. That's our thick one. Okay, how do we hold the icing bag? Well, if you've taken a class with me before, you already know. This is the way that I do it. Feel free to do it any way that is comfortable for you. Um, but I have my palm right where my thumb is, right under the knot. Now, again, if your icing is way down here, but your knot's up here, you actually want to be on top of the icing. So you want that thumb to be right on top of the icing where the icing ends. So if you're, if we end up going hours and hours and we use like this much and your icing is here, then you would come up right above it like that. But since we have a full bag of icing, we want to go right under that, that knot. I like to tuck my thumb in and then you're going to just kind of uh, rest your fingers over. All right. So we're tucking that thumb in. That's going to give us a good little squeeze into our palm here and then just relax your your fingers right there all right so we have our wrist comes up so we're going hopefully y'all can see that um we're going to have our opposite pointer finger coming right to where that base is so as you're moving along this is going to steady you okay so if you're really shaky that that finger right there kind of gives you a little bit of a steadiness and it kind of helps you to control um so you're here, thumb in, fingers over, boom. Most important thing is, well, there's a couple most important things when you're outlining, but one of the really important things is you don't want that plastic tip to be touching the paper. So you want to be about an inch. I say a centimeter, but it's more kind of bigger. It's like about an inch off of that paper. So as you're moving, you're letting that icing just kind of drag off of your icing bag onto the paper, okay? And so if you're pressing, you're not gonna get that thick line of a barrier that you want because this is your barrier for that thin icing that's going inside. Okay, and I'm gonna show you all of that. First thing we have to do is cut a little hole. Um, so I always show with a pencil here um, you see where the pencil lead starts or ends and where that wood begins. Imagine that as your icing bag. You're going to cut off about that much. Can you all see that? So when you cut off that little piece of plastic, 
you want that little piece to be about the width of a little pencil lead and a number two pencil that popped out off of the pencil. Okay, now remember, you can always cut a little bit more, but you cannot make it smaller <laughs> once you cut that hole. So if you are ready or haven't done so already, cut off. That little piece is going to be about the width of a number two pencil lead that popped off. Okay, now it's flat right now so I just take my fingers, I squeeze a little bit from the top like I showed you, I take my fingers and I just run it on both sides so that it's not a flat line. You want to look at it and be able to see a hole in that icing bag. Okay, here's going to be the test to see if we actually cut the right amount off. So we want that line of our icing to completely cover this black line on the worksheet. So I'm gonna, I'm actually not gonna use that finger because I want you to be able to kind of see what I'm doing, hopefully. I don't want that finger to be in the way, but I am letting that icing just kind of drag. Be patient with it. If you go too fast, you're gonna break that line which is fine. I mean, if it happens, then you can wipe it off and try it again or run back over it again, re-outline it. But see, I'm, I'm letting that icing just kind of fall onto the paper. If that icing completely covers the black line on your worksheet and doesn't over <laughs> cover it, then you had a, you cut off a, the right amount. If you do your little lines and you can see the black lines underneath that white line, go ahead and cut off just a smidge more, not too much more off of that. So this is just practice. This is for you to feel a little bit more confident when we do it on the cookies. So kind of check yourself, see how you're holding the icing bag. Um, Obviously, I wasn't doing it so that you could see, but taking that finger right at that base, steadying your hand. Another little tip is when you start and stop a line, you kind of touch, you do touch the paper, so I guess I kind of contradicted myself, but you do kind of dip down a little bit and then you pull up. As you end the line, you kind of dip down to pull up and stop that line. Does that make sense? Try it out, see what you think. Try, you know, this is, you might come up with a different way to do all of this. I have taught many, many people. I've seen many things. I've had people with arthritis or, you know, things with their hands that they couldn't hold the bag the way that I do and they figure it out. So you just kind of figure out what works for you. Take your time. After you finish the lines, try the little squiggles and the loops. Take your time as you turn those corners. It's all about controlling that movement. And if you're up off the paper, you're actually going to be able to kind of manipulate where that icing is going to land. So like as I'm letting it drag, sometimes if I see that it's going to be in a wrong place, I'll kind of like shake it, like move my hand a little bit to get it on the black line um, so just kind of practice this is the hardest part so the more you can practice this the better you'll be on the outlining and the detailing another little trick is uh, since this is a thicker icing it dries very quickly so sometimes I can use my toothpick to kind of push it to where I want to go. So, did you see that? You could see the black line. I used my toothpick, pushed it over, now you can't see it. So that's kind of a good thing is you can sort of manipulate this thicker icing a little bit more than the other ones. Circles are tricky, a little bit tricky here. Again, I'm kind of literally like 
as I'm letting it fall, if I see that it's gonna land in a place I don't want it to, I kind of pick it up and like move it around. Just so you know, I've never actually shared that tip with anybody in a class. So that goes to show every class, I literally will share different things, not really on purpose, like I'm not like trying to keep things from you, but as I, you know, do this more, I think this is probably maybe my like fifth, 50th class that I've done. So as I kind of teach, I kind of go, oh, that, that would be good to share with people. So, you know, every class is a little bit different. You learn a little bit different things, different techniques. And then sometimes I literally just teach different things. But on this, on this heart, once you get to it, if you're not there yet, these little, you know, dips in, like the little tips, the corners, like before you complete the other half of that heart, I kind of dip down and then pull back up. So as I'm starting it, I start in the middle here. I dip down, let it catch, and then I pull up and I manipulate it where I want to go. Now on the bottom here, I kind of dip down and then back up to come back. So it's like as you're like kind of turning corners, you want to sort of dip down, which helps you go in a different direction. So if you're changing directions like on a square, you would go dip down, pull back up as you're switching directions. It's another little tip there. Okay. See how I'm manipulating it with the toothpick? Yeah. Not a fan of circles, to be honest. <clears throat> they are hard. And so, hence the reason why I literally just was like, skipped this one, didn't want to do it. Because they are hard. So if you're having a hard time, trust me, it truly is difficult. Circles can be a little tricky. Especially as you kind of like go to meet that other starting point, then you have this like big like dollop right there. You can use your toothpick to kind of flatten out that area. The part where it sort of is like this giant bump from where you started and stopped. That one was not pretty. Oh well. Okay. So. I am done with mine, which doesn't necessarily mean that you are done, but if you are, um, we are going to put this to the side and start to move on. Okay. So I know that, I know a couple of y'all are taking the class live. I also know that some of y'all are taking it on Sunday at a party. That's so fun, by the way. I thought that was a great idea. Have a little virtual class party. Um, my napkins just fell on the ground. That's not cool. Oh well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is outline. Oh, got some more napkins. So we're going to outline all of the cookies that are going to be white, which like I said, was pretty much all of them. <laughs> so uh, we have, let's, let's start with our Christmas tree because I believe that this will be one of the easier ones to outline. And we're going to be outlining the entire cookie, just going with the outline of that cookie and we're cutting off the little trunk because that'll be our brown. So, same icing bag that you've been using, you already cut it, we're good to go. It's the, the thick one that has a one on it. Okay, kind of position, get ready, make sure you're holding it right, or whatever works for you. And I like to start on the top. Again, I'm not going to use this finger, just so that you can see it a little better. We want to get as close to the edge 
of that cookie as possible. We don't want the icing to run off, of course, but every time I'm changing direction, I dip down and then I pull back up, letting that icing drag. Now you don't have to do this in a continuous movement like I'm doing. You can start and stop. You can do one line, then stop and take a break. Then you can pick back up. Just make sure that there are no gaps in that outline. So no breaks, no holes. Uh, if there are any, go back over it, fill it in so that you're imagining this is your barrier. Your thin icing goes inside. You don't want any of that thin icing to seep under or kind of like get through the barrier because there's a gap. Um, if you if your line was completely covering that worksheet that is the perfect width that you want to be able to do on the cookie so however you cut it this one with the worksheet just remember all of the ones that we cut that are going to be outlined are going to be cut that same amount so just keep that in mind i'll show you again as we continue on i'm going to give you a little bit more time after you do this one we're not going to flood it yet we're going to move over to the next one. So we're gonna outline every single one that's gonna be white. Oh, I forgot to show you what the, pro the end product is. So, little like uh, a sweater Christmas tree, kind of fun. You know what? To make it a little bit easier for you, I don't know if you can see sort of these, this definition, like kind of where it starts and stops. So when you go to detail it, instead of us trying to imagine a straight line across, how about we just go ahead and outline that part so we can kind of give ourselves that line because it's easier if you can do it in the beginning. So what I mean by that is we're going to just come and do three straight lines across everywhere that they're sort of like that section of the tree. We're just gonna do a line across. Okay, three lines across. That's gonna give us some direction. Not really gonna matter while we're uh, flooding it, but it is going to give us a little bit of direction as far as the detailing goes to get some of those straighter lines there. Okay, now after you've done that, let's just move right along to our snowflake. You can put this one off to the side. Okay, snowflake, again, you're just following that outline of the cookie, following the edge of the cookie. Lots of turns, lots of corners. So try to use that technique where you're dipping down and, and then pulling up every time you're changing direction. Um, I think I might have already said this, but if you go to do the outline and you don't like it, you can take your toothpick and just wipe it off and lick it. Or <laughs> I don't personally do that, of course, but <laughs> you can wipe it off, put it in your napkin uh, if you don't like it. It's, this is the part where if you mess up, it's very, very easy to correct it. Uh, it's only when you add the details that it gets, you kind of, you can't wipe it off. But at this point, you can wipe it off. So just keep that in mind. And again, you don't have to do it continuously. Okay, you can do one line and take a break. And then try for this little curved line. Or you can... Do the trick where you push down, then pull up as you're turning corners. Again, as a friendly reminder, just make sure you're watching how you're holding that bag. Is that thumb tucked in to give you a good squeeze? Are you using that finger to help you keep it nice and controlled and steady if that helps you? Are you a little bit off of that? cookie and just letting it kind of drag on 
to the cookie rather than being super, super close to that cookie. All right. And I'm actually going to use that little trick where I'm going to manipulate the icing a little bit over here just to get it a little closer to the edge. Making sure there are no gaps. All right. Once you do that, that one is done for now. And we will do our snowman next. Let me know if I'm going too fast. If you're taking this class, let me know in the comments if I'm moving a little too fast. I can always slow down a little. Of course, on YouTube, it's nice because you can pause it. All right, snowman. So, show you what we're going to do. So, we are going to be doing three sections for this little guy. So, we've got the head part, we're going to outline that. Then we're going to do, you can't really see it under the scarf, but we're going to outline the middle section here. And then we're going to outline the bottom section. So, you've got three sections. So, when we go to flood it, we're actually going to do the top one and the bottom one. We're going to flood those, but we're going to leave the middle one uh, naked. And then when we let these two parts dry, then we're going to go in and flood the middle. What that does is going to leave you a little bit of definition. So if you let two segments, you know, dry before you add the middle one, then when that middle one dries, they look kind of like little blocks. If you were to do all three flooded, then they just kind of, when, they just kind of run together which then it's like, what was the point of creating these little blocks or these segments? So that, that'll that make sense once we get to it, but just wanted to set y'all up for success. So still working with the thick white. Like I said, lots of cookies are getting uh, this thick white here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here on the left, let it catch And I'm doing that whole top part that I can see. Now, when I get to where it kind of curves out, I'm going to kind of do a little curved line straight across. So it looks kind of like an igloo. So that will be the first step there. All right. Now, the middle part has like a little um, scarf. We want to imagine the snowman without the scarf. And so the only part where you're having to make your own line is over here on the left. You're going to come right next to that top part. Make sure there's no gap. And you're going to kind of dip out a little bit. Then again, straight across to meet that other side. Finish that part and then make sure that part is hugging that top part. See that? So we're making these little segments for our snowman. Mine's a little straight, so I'm kind of manipulating it to be a little bit more curved. And then the last part, hug that middle section, continue the outline to finish the snowman. There you have it. We have one more, one more that we need to outline in white. Are you kidding me? I dropped my napkin again. Thank goodness I have plenty of them. 
Oh boy. Just like, maybe I don't want it on my lap. Like, I literally always put it on my lap, but for some reason today, it doesn't want to be on my lap. All right. Last one. This little guy. Tiny, tiny heart. So, where did my white just go? There it is. You already practice hearts on your worksheet. So look, this is the perfect time to um, put what you practice into full swing here. Put it to good use. So, not too bad. It's just right at that tip there, we kind of dip down and then we change direction. and meet right back where you started. All right. So that, that had, that is all, da, 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 yep. Those four have been outlined. Now comes the fun part, is the flooding. So we are going to go in the direction that we, the same exact sequence as we started. So the first one we are going to flood, sorry, let me get situated, is the tree. Okay. So with the thin, thin white, watch me first if this is your first time. I'm also going to give you some advanced tips. So a couple of advanced tips here for you. We want to cut a little bit bigger than we did with the outline. Um, not too much bigger though. So just a little bit bigger. Let me see if I can show you all this. So if I snip it off, I want that little piece. So the piece is a little bit bigger than that, the width of a pencil lead, but not too much. We don't want it to just overflow out. It is a thin icing, so it's gonna leak. So anytime I'm not using it, I just keep it upside down. All right, so I'm gonna use it and when I'm done, boop, because it is gonna <laughs> leak out. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the second and the fourth section here. Cause again, same concept as the, um, the snowman. We wanna do these, let that dry a little bit, then go in and do the other. All right, you're gonna want your toothpick handy because this is going to spread it into the outline, pop any air bubbles if there are any. And what I do, so as a beginner, what you might want to do is get close to that outline, but not touching the outline when you go to put it in. And then you take your toothpick and kind of like push it towards uh, the outline. So I'm going to show you that, that technique. Then I'm going to show you a more advanced one. So this kind of prevents over flooding. So it's like that, and I'm not getting all the way to that outline. And then I go in with my toothpick and I swirl it and I drag it towards that the outline. That prevents over flooding, but it also takes up some time. Make sure you have enough icing there that you cannot see that cookie underneath. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? There's a bug right there. Seriously. Get away, fly. Get away. Wow. Of course it would happen during a class and never any other time. <laughs> Just so y'all know, when that happens for a custom order, I throw the cookie away. But these don't actually get eaten, believe it or not. I just used them for the class. <laughs> All right. Here is the um, advanced way that, so this saves time. You almost don't want to use your toothpick like at all. So you will get as close as you can to that outline. You're putting in just enough, but not too much that it's going to fly, like fall off of the side. But you almost like use your tip of your icing bag as your toothpick. And then that's it. I didn't even need to use my toothpick at all. Um, that's much faster. Uh, you also, it's a little harder because you have to kind of know how much you're going to put in. 
So a lot of times for beginners, they either put too much in and it over floods, or they don't put in enough and then they're sitting there forever with their toothpick trying to spread it and then they can see the cookie underneath and you know, neither situation is really pleasant. <laughs> so you wanna put in enough that you, it's like a pillow on top of the cookie and you don't see the cookie underneath, but you also don't wanna put in too much that it just over floods. So it's kind of figuring out that balance. Um, it is quicker though to do it the advanced way and just boom, barely use your toothpick. You use the tip of your icing bag as almost a toothpick to kind of get some of those gaps, um, pushing it a little bit with the tip. That's what I do. It's up to you, figure out what works for you, what you can handle. Um, so your icing, the thin icing, it dries pretty quickly in the sense that after about two minutes, you're not gonna be able to use your toothpick. So you pretty much wanna get that all in as quickly as possible, use your toothpick if you need, and then just let it be. So right now, if we touch our little Christmas tree, it's gonna get messed up. So we don't wanna touch it, we don't want it to bump into anything, but we do need to move on to the next key. So we are going to carefully move it over to the side. Try not to let anything touch it. The next one that we did was the snowflake. Okay, this one's a little tricky because there's a lot of little corners here. If you don't feel confident doing it the advanced way, don't worry about it. Just drop in a little bit of icing, and then when you're done dropping it all in, take your toothpick, push it into the corners, okay? I'm probably gonna do it that way so that y'all can see. So I'm not gonna necessarily get really up in there in the corners just for the sake of showing y'all. So there we got some gaps, totally fine. Use your toothpick, you've got about two minutes before it starts to harden, so we are fine on time as long as we put enough. If you're going, you're doing your little toothpick and you're noticing that it is starting to harden on you, that, that's when you're gonna wanna drop in more icing before it starts to harden even more. So if you're sitting here for, you know, two minutes or longer with the toothpick, just drop in a little bit more icing and you should be good to go. Right. Now, while it's still wet, and you know, don't freak out, it's not really a time issue. Just within the next five minutes, we wanna drop in some sprinkles, but we're not gonna use all of them. So these are the ones that are the like snowy white sprinkles. There are two types of sprinkles and there uh, is like edible glitter in these. Super fun, I love this mix. I, I did make it myself, just put in edible glitter in two different types of sprinkles. But while this is wet, I'm just gonna take a couple of pinches and kind of sprinkle it onto the cookie. I'm also gonna do this when I go to detail it, but I do like the effect of kind of having multiple places have these sprinkles. So I'm just gonna take a little pinch and just sort of spread it around. Not too much, uh, probably about two pinches here. Give it a little snowy effect. Maybe three pinches. I just love sparkles and sprinkles. <laughs> okay. Maybe a fourth. Okay, I'm so sorry. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we we do have enough. Uh, we're going to use this again a couple of times, actually. But, so after you do that, add a little bit of the sprinkles, then this cookie is ready to dry. It's not done yet, of course, but it looks so pretty with the sprinkles. Oh, I love snow. I've only seen snow like one time, but I love it. I think I love it. I don't know. My husband's from Massachusetts, so he, as he gets older, he says like, no, like every year he wants to live up north less and less. So he's done. He's like, I'm done with the cold. I'm done with the snow. <laughs> but almost to the point where he doesn't even want to like visit a place that's snowy because he's just like, he doesn't like to be cold, which I understand, you know? Uh, but I, I was fun to, I like, I like snow. I want to see it. I want to go up to the mountains at one point in the winter. I think that'd be awesome. Okay. I'm just kind of moving some of these sprinkles away. All right, so just like the tree, we're going to do 
the top part and the bottom part, leaving this part naked, as you would say, a little naked cookie. So let's go ahead. You can do it the beginner way where you use that toothpick a little bit more, or you can do it the advanced way where you kind of use the tip of your icing as the toothpick, get as close as you can to that outline. If you are going about and you find that you put in too much and it's about to over flood, you can always kind of like pick it out with your toothpick. You can also just wait if you do over flood, you can also wait till it dries and then it'll be easier to like scrape it off. And you know what I did? I actually added the sprinkles the same ones to the, the snowman as well. Kind of give it a little snowy effect. Don't go too crazy because we don't want the sprinkles to be the focus. Um, but if you would like, just kind of put some of these either all over or sort of like on the bottom here and on the top. Give it a little snowy effect. I didn't, I don't think I did on the whole thing, but do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. Just a little bit, not over the top, but just a little. And again, letting this dry. You wanna be careful when you're moving it Try not to shake it too much or bump it. Um, we just want to be careful not to mess it up. So we only have one more here. All these sprinkles. So our heart is going to get the flooding of the white. However, before you do that, couple of things. Um, I want you to have your blue sprinkles. Super cute. Got these from um, a shop. She's on Etsy, but I think she also has her own website. Uh, it's called Neon, like Neon Green or Neon Pink. Neon Yolk, like an egg yolk shop. She has all these sprinkle mixes. Um, I love them. And they're yeah they're just fun like she does all these little different mixes for the holidays but there's this one that's like giant i'm not going to use that because i feel like it's too big for the little heart so if you have one of these like massive little um i don't know silver sprinkles it's so big it's cute but it's huge um, i'm just gonna pick that out so we want to have these ready now here's a tip from my experience when you go to add in the thin icing and then you put the sprinkles on top. The snow sprinkles, they're very light. They're, they don't weigh a lot. They're tiny. When you add these sprinkles, they're a little heavier. They're a little bigger. So sometimes what happens is if you put in too much of that thin white, when you then add the sprinkles, it over floods. And you're like, but I put the right amount in, you know, for the white icing. It doesn't matter. It's just that the sprinkles are so heavy and so big. So sometimes what I do is if I'm going to be putting sprinkles on top that are heavier, I'm going to put in a little bit less white icing. Okay, so I'm not going to make it this huge pillow on top. I'm going to cover the cookie, but I don't want it to be massive that then when I put the sprinkles on, it's all going to overflow. So I will show you what I mean by that. Just have the sprinkles ready. So this would be one of those times that I don't quite go all the way to the edge. But I put in enough that it's still, I'm not going to see that cookie underneath. But then I use my toothpick to sort of help spread it out. And then sometimes I even let it dry for about 30 seconds before I put those sprinkles in. Both of these techniques, techniques are going to help for not letting it over flood or for the sprinkles to fall off when you go to put them on. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit, like 30 seconds. And what I did was I just put them on the right side. So you can see this. So 
it's good to go. I'm going to just kind of burr, 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 burr. Then Sometimes I can like pick out the one, the colors that I want or the ones that I want. Like that. Put on as many as you want. You can put them on the entire cookie if you want. I do this color. Oh, that's so pretty. I love that like teal color. This is actually a Hanukkah mix. Use it for the winter class. I'm so particular. I'm like picking out the one that I want and like putting it in. Oh, come on. That's the one I want and it won't come out. Oh goodness, whatever. It ain't coming out. <laughs> okay. There we go. You can also use your toothpick to sort of move around the sprinkles if you are a perfectionist like I am. Oop. Right, and there you have it. Cute. Okay, so it's kind of funny, but this is the only cookie, this little heart is the only one that is completely done. So, congratulations for starting and finishing your very first cookie. Alright, we want to let it dry. This guy is done. So, well, he's going to go on top of the mug, but for now, he's done. And, how about we come back to the tree and the snowman, and we'll finish flooding these. So, let's do the tree first, since that one was finished first. Hope you're doing all right. You guys having fun? Put you in the mood for Christmas a little bit. Okay. So we're just finishing up here. We've given it a chance to dry a little bit. So now when we go to add this in, It'll kind of give us some of that definition when they both dry. Hug up real close to the other white. And you can use that toothpick to get into some of those harder to reach places. Remember to kind of swirl the toothpick as you drag. You don't want to just drag it. You kind of swirl it and move it makes it a lot easier. Okay. Give y'all a minute to catch up if you need to. Okay. Then you want to do the middle part of the snowman. I didn't add sprinkles to the middle part, I just did them to the um, bottom and the top. But if you do want, if you did it, like if you did the sprinkles all over, uh, then you can definitely put sprinkles on the middle as well. Hugging as close as we can. But of course, we, whoop, throwing my toothpick around. Of course, we have our toothpick to help us out here. All right. I'm covering up a little bit of the outline because I think I kind of messed up or I just don't like the way it looks. So I'm, I'm kind of pushing that icing to sort of cover up that outline a little bit which is a technique you can do if you did mess up on the outline and you want to kind of hide your mistake take your toothpick and kind of like push it over uh, to that that outline okay so our Christmas tree or not really a Christmas our tree is outlined and flooded our snowflake is outlined and flooded 
our heart is done our snowman is outlined and flooded so all that's left on these are the details but we need to let it dry a little bit more because if we go to add the details now it's just going to kind of sink into that that base icing so let's move this little guy over let him dry that dry okay and then before we take our break which is soon we are going to do our mug okay so if you're taking the class live feel free to comment if you have any questions let me know um, having fun let me know <laughs> and the break will be a good time too if you have any questions okay All right so this one's a little bit trickier um, we are going to need our thick blue so we've been dealing with a lot of white now we get to do a different color so it's your your uh, thick that has a line on it okay again if you haven't already go ahead and kind of massage all right now remember how you cut off that little piece bring my little teaching aid over here my little pencil so we're cutting off about that much about the width of a pencil lead here Boop. no telling where that plastic piece just went ah there it is as long as it doesn't go into my cookie i'm fine <laughs> Okay, about like that. Again, run your fingers side. I've tried, I like to try it on my napkin sometimes first so that I know it's coming out all right. Some of that, the first times will get little air bubbles or some little water. So the first line we're gonna make, we are going to do a curved line like a smile right up here underneath that whipped cream so sort of where you see that cookie kind of like start to go up and in is where we'll start that line so we're going to go straight across cutting off that whipped cream and just doing that line right there okay next part is on the left here we want to start and stop a line here cutting off that handle if we go a straight line it'll look kind of funny so you kind of want to like curve out almost mirroring that right side of the cup so we start up here we're going to go kind of curved cutting off that handle and then we're going to come across and just finish the outline of that cookie here. Did it fix itself? It was a little bit blurry, somebody said. I saw that. This, this is why I'm going to be going to a different platform because Facebook, no matter what camera you use, it's a little bit blurry. So I'm super excited about going to like a different platform completely and it is going to be crystal clear. Well, a lot clearer than it is now. So I'm pretty excited about that just to be able to have like super good quality and uh, good sound. Like it's going to be awesome. Like you know, looking back, like even my very first class that I did in person, like sometimes I just want to like bury my head. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it was, it was great to everybody else, but like just over time you learn things and like, oh, this is better for teaching purposes or whatever. Um, and so it's interesting, like just seeing sort of the progression of how the classes have gone. And I'm, I'm just super excited for 2020 being able to do like some new things better streaming uh better quality i'm really excited so hopefully y'all can enjoy that journey with me 
and tell all your friends because it'll be well worth it. Um, okay, then we're going to do the little handle. So the first part we're going to do is just the whole outline that you see, that outer part right there. All right, trying to get away from being in the way of the camera. So that's the first part there. You can have a skinny handle or a thicker one, but whatever you choose, we're going to kind of mirror that a little bit symmetrical. We're just going to come and do like a semicircle here. So that we've got our handle and that little middle semicircle there is going to stay a naked cookie and then this will be blue and this will be blue. Okay. So same concept as when we did the heart. What's going to happen is we're putting in the thin blue into the middle part. We're going to hold off on the handle for now. We're going to put the blue in here. Now what you're doing is you're adding a cookie on top. So it's heavy, it's big. So we don't want to put too much of the blue on because then if we go to add the cookie then it might overflow. So we put in a little bit of this then we're going to let it dry for a little bit. Then we're literally just going to stick the heart cookie right on top. So remember you're cutting a little bit bigger than the outline. Okay. And then I'm going to drop some in. But I don't want to really put too much. Lots of gaps. I'm just going to take my toothpick. Spread it out to the outline. So not a super thick layer here. Enough that you can't see that cookie underneath. Since we're adding that bad boy right on top, we don't want it to be too much icing that it just falls off the cookie. And then once you do that, just wait, you know, just wait 30 seconds to a minute before you add that heart on top. So you kind of want to look at where that middle of the cookie is going to be. That's where the heart's going to go. So just waiting a little bit longer. These are just different tricks I've learned from over flooding and <laughs> crazy things happening. Okay, it's going to cover a lot of the cookie which is fine, um, but somewhere in the middle, just kind of drop it on, and that's it. <laughs> it's a little bit of a different effect here. Two cookies on one rather than doing like the actual detailing. So once it's on, you pretty much want to just kind of let it be don't want to move it around too much. Okay. All right. So now we are going to take a little break. So get some water if you need to stand up, if you need to, we will be detailing all of them. However, I think I'm going to just leave that there. We're going to do a couple of door prizes. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. All right, I always put my hair up when I'm doing cookies. Um, okay, so hopefully you're having fun. I'm having fun. I, I truly enjoy this. I love teaching cookie decorating classes. I look forward to working every day, making cookies, decorating them is the most fun for me. Um, baking is not as much fun in my mind, but I love decorating. So, 
here's what I have. A literal hat <laughs> that I'm going to shake up. I'm going to draw two names. It's just funny. At least I had this hat. So the first person, so this is everybody that paid for a kit and a class. You got your name and this hat. And I'm going to pull out two names. The first person is going to get 50% off a future virtual class, which is, remember, we're going to have two to three of them uh, next year every month. Two to three every month. Uh, the soonest one being a royal icing class. And that'll be fun. People have been asking for it. Oh, I just realized my heart is cockeyed. Okay. Um, so the first person gets 50% off. Okay. And that person is last name Foreman, first name Shannon. Congratulations, Shannon Foreman. That's a cool name. Uh, you get 50% off. I will send you a discount code in your email tonight, actually. And then the second person is going to get 25% off a future virtual class. So let's see who we got. And that person is Kara Quirk. Congratulations, Kara. You got 25% off a future virtual class. That was a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> so I will send you also a discount code in the future. Okay, thanks for playing. I love doing little door prizes because not only does it give us time for the cookies to dry a little bit longer, but it also um, is just my way of saying thank you. Thank you for taking the class. Thank you for supporting me and allowing this to be my full-time job, which is amazing. It was never that way. It was just a little hobby starting out. And now it is um, my full-time job and our only source of income right now as my husband is at uh, UF doing grad school for mechanical engineering. So we are super blessed, just thankful. I hope that you have fun because I love it and I just, I wanna share that with everybody else. So Kara and Sh uh, Shannon, great job, congratulations. Thank you for taking uh, this class with me. Okay, so look what's happening, my cookie is my uh, mug is like, even though I waited, it's still kind of sliding off. So if that happened to you, I will show you a way to fix that. If your uh, blue icing is starting to kind of melt away, I'll show you how to fix that. Not a problem. All right, you got any questions, comments? Okay, so we, I'm going to tell y'all what we have next. Um, we have all the detailing to do. So the snowflake is going to get some little lines, some more sprinkles. The mug is we're going to flood the handle and we're gonna add the whipped cream at the end because we actually have to cut the icing bag to make it a little thicker to do the whipped cream. So that's gonna be like the last thing we do. Um, and then the tree is going to get the trunk as well as these little quilted sort of, um, this quilted look, I guess, like a sweater. So I think I'm gonna practice that actually on a napkin or the parchment paper first because it is a little bit tricky. And then like I said, once you add the details you cannot if you mess up you can't really wipe it off so we're going to try to do some of this stuff like on a napkin or the parchment paper to just kind of practice before we do it on the actual cookie um, but that's what this tree is going to get a little kind of like a sweater design and then the snowman's going to get the scarf some buttons uh, a carrot nose which is the only thing you're using the orange for and then this darker blue is the only thing is the the scarf we got some eyes uh, earmuffs as well and then some little arms if you want to add them so that's it and then that'll that'll be it for this class so let's start with the snowflake 
So let me just get kind of everything. Okay. You can watch me first if you would like, or we'll kind of do it together as we go. But what you're going to need is your thick white, and then go ahead and grab those little sprinkles, the like snowy sprinkles, just to be ready. You can open them up. I do like to put those on after I do the details because I just think it kind of makes it pop a little bit more. But there are six corners, six uh, points to the snowflake. So we're going to be draw, like drawing a, a straight line from one straight to the other, uh, straight across from it. So we'll go a line here, line, line. That would be three lines. And then we're going to add these little V's to kind of like, it'll make sense, but to make it kind of go with the outline of the cookie. Then we'll add a couple more lines in the middle, sprinkles, and then this cookie is done. So first thing we're going to do, you're going to go from all the way from one side, draw a straight line across to the other side. I know it's a little blurry, so um, hopefully it will correct itself here in a minute. Draw another line straight across. I see that it's still blurry. Let me see if I can... I'm going to reposition it. Go ahead and do that third line because what I want to happen is I want us to put some of those sprinkles down before it dries too much. So after you do three lines, and I'm, I do apologize if it's blurry, I'll try to fix it, but go ahead and add some of those sprinkles on. Hopefully it catches. You can always use your toothpick to kind of or even use your finger to get some of those sprinkles to catch. Let me see if I can, we're just gonna hang on a moment. Oh, it just fixed itself. Okay, Facebook and camera. What you doing? Since I'm not giving these cookies to anybody, I'm gonna take my finger and just kind of get some of those sprinkles onto that icing. If they don't catch, it's fine. So we got our three lines. Alright, so then we want to do those little V's. So everywhere where it kind of points out. Hold on. Don't want it to be blurry. Sometimes it just needs to focus. So we're going to do a V there. There. Kind of like when you're making the snowflake when you were a kid. These little V's. And then I actually did a little tiny V right under those bigger V's. Give even more detail. Make a little bit tinier than the other ones. When you finish that line, dip down and pull back up. Use your toothpick if you want to manipulate any of those um, lines there. Like this one here. Okay. And you can either do little dots like I did on the advertised one. Dot, dot, dot. Like in every single 
kind of like a if you look at it if it's like a pizza you're doing it on every little piece of pizza a dot or you can do a line like you just did I'm thinking let's do dots I think that'll be a little bit cleaner so everywhere there's an open space we're gonna do a dot so a dot you kind of you touch the cookie with the icing you squeeze and then you pull straight up squeeze that one did not catch squeeze pull straight up squeeze and pull then we're going to add a little dot right in the middle if you want you can try to add some of those sprinkles the little dots. And wherever else you want those sprinkles to go. Okay. So awesome. That cookie is complete. Yay. Little snowflake, one of my favorite ones. Super simple and elegant. All right. Okay, so you can either put this off to the side, or if you would like, you can put it in your bakery box for safekeeping. Um, I'm just going to put mine off to the side because I've got a lot of stuff going on here. All right. But first one is done. Okay, let's, um, you know what, let's do our mug. So, if you had a little uh, explosion of the blue, what you can do is take your toothpick and like literally just scrape it off. That's what I'm going to do. So, you know, sometimes even when we when I do these different techniques to like avoid that still happens and you know what's funny is it literally always happens during a class it's like a just to keep me humble you know <laughs> and I think too like you know I don't mind making mis it's it's so funny I make so many mistakes in class and I'm like I literally just did like 50 of those the other day and had no mistake but it's funny because then it's like somebody else in the class will be like oh that happened to me too and then then I'm able to like help them because I made the same mistake so um kind of curious if y'all y'all's uh exploded at all but let's do the handle here with that thin make sure you're grabbing the thin blue And blue. All right, we're gonna let that dry. And then now we're gonna practice that little like sweater look that we're doing on the tree. So what you'll want to do is grab one of the napkins or you can even do it on the little like worksheet. Um, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> the icing's all like falling off, it's funny. So you could do it on napkin or your parchment paper. Let me get another napkin. Okay, so. What I did was, I did, I kind of had this pattern, so it was like dots, and then a line, hearts, a line, and dots, and then I kind of just like did that pattern. Um, so, I'll show you, like just kind of pretend like you're about to work on your little tree, and we'll see how this goes, just to get a little bit of practice, because 
once you do it on the tree, you can't, if you mess up, you really can't start over, can't scrape it off. Um, so somewhere, wherever you're doing, our pattern is going to be a straight line going vertical, straight line. Then you're going to do like, I mean, for the practice part, it doesn't really matter, but just kind of like some dots here. And then uh, we'll do another line. Kind of, I'm kind of doing it on a larger scale just because of how we're doing it, just practicing. It'll be a little bit closer together on the actual cookie. And if you are finding that in the beginning, if you cut too big of a hole and you're you're not really getting the detail that you want because you're just your hole is too big, uh, you can also squeeze this out into one of the empty bags that I gave you. Okay, so if you've taken a class with me before, you may have done this already. Um, but let's just say that it is too too big of a hole. You can cut a little bit of a bigger hole here. Stick it inside of the new bag. And then with one hand, squeeze it out. The other hand is going to be holding it. Squeeze it all out. Pull it out so that this is empty. And now this has all the icing. And then you can recut it and hopefully get a smaller hole that you want. All right, so a line, dots, a line. Then we're gonna do heart. We're gonna have the left side of our heart be touching that line that we have right there. So you can, you can do hearts two ways. You can like basically outline it and then go in and fill in the middle with the same thick icing or you can squeeze, 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 and then kind of like drag down and do like a teardrop on both sides. So I'll, so I'll show you both ways. So if we're doing the outlining part, we would literally like do the outline of a heart. And then we would just go with that same icing and kind of like fill it in. That's one way. The way that I like to do is to just sit here and squeeze till I have the right width and then drag down. Squeeze and drag down. It just looks, it looks a little bit better um, and it's actually a little bit easier. So if we did that, we would then come right under it, squeeze, and we want these hearts to be touching each other and them to be touching the line as well. All right, then the pattern on the tree is going to be another line and then dots. It's going to basically be the same little pattern here. Then line. So you got line, dots, line, heart, line, dots, line. And you just kind of continue the pattern. So this is about to hopefully make sense here. I'm going to put up the finished product and then the one that we're doing. So if we, let's see, we want to do, what the bug again? Come on, dude. Get away. Get away. It's like a tiny, tiny bug. We want to do the, it doesn't really matter really, like, so we have these little blocks right here. So you can pretty much start wherever you want. As you can tell here, I sort of like had them start in different places. So like I did hearts here and then I moved a little bit over and hearts a little bit over and hearts. Honestly, do whatever you would like. I'm going to start with the bottom one. And again, totally up to you what you want to do, but let's do in this little corner a little dot since it has some room for it. 
and then we're going to do a line and then how about we do so we're going to follow the pattern that we practice so we'll do the little hearts now if you want you can go ahead and do that next line so you kind of know where your hearts are going to be so now I know that my hearts are going to be within these two lines here and then I'm going to do the method whoops I totally just poked that I'm going to do the method where I squeeze and drag and I think I can fit two and a half <laughs> little hearts okay now we go dots and then a line so where that that line is from when we uh, flooded it that's what I'm kind of basing it off of. I'm going to that line. So, dot, line, hearts, line, dot, line, hearts. For the hearts, squeeze, 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 then drag down. Same thing on the other side. Squeeze and pull. Squeeze and pull. Remember you can use your toothpick to kind of manipulate it a little bit. Okay, then dots. At this point, we're probably going to start to kind of go at our own pace. So, do what you want to do. If you have a different design that you want to do, go for it. Be artistic. It's going to take us some time. So, probably going to take about, I don't know, like three minutes at least to do the, the full um, cookie here. Okay, where am I at? Dots. Alright, I got the bottom one done. One down, three to go. <laughs> um, let's see. I think I'm just going to start with a dot like at every single corner branch on the left. Yeah. Looks good. Does anybody have any questions about those hearts? If you're taking the class live. It's squeezing. Squeezing and dragging down. Squeeze till you have the, the width that you want. And then like quickly drag down. some time right it's like oh this is why custom cookies cost so much <laughs> when I started out you know I was I wasn't really that good <laughs> to be honest um, but when I started selling them I sold them for like I don't know like 20 bucks maybe or like $15 a dozen and I was literally making like negative dollars an hour um, because the ingredients cost more than that so but I was like you know hey you know I need the experience get my name out there or whatever so now 
my prices are much more than that. If you've, you know, ordered from me, you know that they're anywhere between like 36 to 54 per dozen. So I went from like 15 to like 36 to 54. And it sound, you know, it just sounds outrageous, but it's like now still like it's worth, you know, like the time that it takes, it takes so much time to do custom orders. And so, you know, I think like when people take classes, they kind of go, oh, this, you know, it make it kind of makes sense. And it, I think it gives like a sort of appreciation for it when you do it, which I think is true of anything that you're doing really. Um, but it kind of just shows like, it does take a lot of time. So that's really what you're paying for is the time that it takes to do all the, of the detailing, you know? I don't know about you, but I am almost done with mine. Just got one more heart to do. I really like the little effect of this. Something kind of different. It's cute. I did not add sprinkles to this, but if you would like to, go for it. The little, like, snow sprinkles or whatever. Alright. I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Focus. Right. Truly looking forward to our new platform that we're going to do, be doing classes on next year. Be awesome. The only thing that this one needs um, is the little tree trunk. You could, you know, potentially leave it like that since the cookie is kind of already like a tan color. You could leave it like that if you wanted to. Um, kind of gives it like a little rustic look. But the um, the little like brown color is the is all of all of this is gonna be the tree trunk. That's all we need it for. And so remember how I said that this one is a medium consistency. So that means you can outline and flood with it. So when you go to cut it, you want to cut that little hole as if it were the thick one and you were outlining with it. It's going to flow out super smooth and easy. But we're just going to outline it first. And if you're still working on your cookie, you're like you're detailing. Um, don't worry, I'm not trying to rush you, uh, but I am just doing that outline in case you are ahead. And then we're going to let that part dry a little bit longer. So when you are doing the same consistency for the outlining and flooding, since it is thinner, when you do the outline, you will want it to dry a little bit longer before you go in and add that um, flooded, you know, inner part because it will take a little bit longer. It's not as thick, so it doesn't dry as quickly. So that's why I just kind of, I do the outline, wait a little bit before adding it. You can also, you don't even need to cut a bigger hole. You can just use how it is, or if you would like to cut a bigger hole, you can, since we're not using this again. Um, but if you choose not to cut a bigger hole, what you're going to want to do is not use your toothpick at all. The medium consistency is not as thin as the flooding one, and so it takes, it's going to dry very quickly when you put it on. So we pretty much want to just like, like how I was showing you with like the advanced version, we want to put in all of it without using our toothpick at all. So that then quickly gets in there. It's going to start drying quickly, but since we're not using our toothpick, that gives us a little bit of an advantage. We don't have to worry about um, trying to get it in quickly before it dries. 
and that's uh, that's gonna complete this cookie so second cookie complete good job how is the um, the little pattern for y'all did you like it is it a little tricky time-consuming right but you know it's the end product hopefully you're happy with that hopefully it's like it's funny in, in classes um, people are kind of like right there with me and then once we get to the detailing part you know some folks are like what am I doing like this looks like a child made and then others are like oh I'm really impressed with that that looks really good and so the detailing part is kind of where that that little bit of that skill and that artistic ability uh, and like detail oriented you know people kind of shine through is because that's 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 hard the outlining and the flooding it's like okay everybody could do that we're on the same page then you get to the de to detailing and that's the hardest part takes practice practice you know that's it just practice okay I'm gonna um, put this aside that one is done okay and we're gonna finish our little snowman he's cute all right so our uh, darker color blue this is a thick one we are going to do the little scarf I'm gonna show you how to do that and then if you want we're gonna add little um, earmuffs so on the advertised cookie this one, we have the earmuffs are uh, the lighter blue so you can choose to do the scarf and the earmuffs with um, this darker blue or you can venture out and do the earmuffs with the um, the lighter blue look how much smaller this one is from that same cutter but what happened was this one spread a little bit on the left here so I found I get this question all the time like how do you prevent that that spreading so it really depends on your recipe um, if your recipe I've found if your recipe has like baking soda or um, baking powder then like it tends to like spread a little bit more um, also if you don't have enough flour in your cookie so for mine my issue is that this this batch of dough didn't have enough um, flour in it so it kind of spreads out a little bit more very interesting um, and then two if you want to prevent the spreading if you put stick your dough in the fridge for a little bit or even the freezer for a little bit then it kind of like hardens it and it won't spread as much so that's just something I've noticed I'm looking at these going they're the same exact cutter this one is so much smaller so that's why okay let's cut a little hole in the blue I'm gonna show you what I do for the actually I'm gonna cut a little bit bigger than the outline somewhere sort of in between the flooding uh, cut and the outline a little bit bigger than the outline a little bit smaller than the flooding and I'm going to just put it on my napkin make sure it's coming out good good to go so we're gonna do the top part first we're gonna do this top scarf first you can watch me here if you want and then I'm going I go up and down as I move towards the right and we're gonna come up right under his little head so we see that we kind of get a little bit of that definition uh, but you're just kind of up and down doo -doo 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 -doo, as you go to the right or even as you go to the left if you're left-handed okay give you all a little bit of time to do that and then we'll do the next part of that scarf I'll show you how to do that okay so after you have that first part we're going to do the same thing on the bottom one but we're gonna go up and we're gonna go like over the one that we just did 
kind of overlap it just a little bit to look something like that. Sometimes I go over it to kind of like hide any like gaps that there might be. So it looks like he's got like a little crocheted or like knitted um, scarf there. I like the earmuffs, so I'm going to add the earmuffs, but I'm going to do it with the, the same uh, color because it's a little bit thicker than the other one, and I just kind of think that if it's thicker, it kind of gives it a little bit more um, of a, a better and like clean look. So for the earmuffs, I did two dots of color kind of where his ears would be. So I outline a little oval first. And then I just kind of fill it in. And then the same thing on the other side. Once you have those little uh, ovals on the side, we can just draw a curved line from one earmuff. One ear myth to the other. I just picked this part out. Alright, so we're just going to do connecting them from one all the way on the top of his head to the other. Taking my toothpick and manipulating a little bit to make it look a little better. All right. So that's it for the uh, darker blue. And then let's do let's do the carrot nose first. This is fun. I, I enjoy this. We're gonna need practice on like a napkin first or even our parchment paper this is so much fun though I love doing a little carrot so with the the orange you only have um, the thick one you're gonna cut that little hole like you would the outline so again just cutting it so that that little piece looks um, like a little pencil lead Let's first run our fingers, make sure it's not flat, and then we're just going to make sure it's coming out. So what I do for the nose is I kind of do a similar effect to the, the scarf, where I pick my starting point, and then I squeeze to make it a little thicker, and then I kind of like go up and down and sort of like squiggle out. So do a couple of times till you kind of get like a little, you know, just kind of get used to it and get the, the shape that you want. You can make it like a little bit crooked, like that. <laughs> um, but you kind of want to squeeze and then sort of zigzag and then like quickly pull it out to kind of get that little like tip of the carrot. And the nose is going to go right in the middle of his face we're going to start a little closer to the left because we want to have room to kind of go out um, but just know that you're going to have your little mouth and your eyes there as well so leave some room for that but start sort of over to the left here squeeze get it a little thicker and then just kind of pull it out <laughs> so cute. If it's not thick enough, you can you can go back over it with the same icing bag. And just kind of do it on top again if you want it to be a little bit bigger. So cute. That's all we're doing with the orange, by the way. So you've got plenty of orange if you want to practice <laughs> carrot noses. They're so fun. 
I uh, just like, I could do carrot noses all day. Okay, next up, and almost the last thing, is going to be our black. So we've got our black, it's thick, we're going to do the eyes, the mouth, I'm going to do a little bit of a different design for the mouth that I tried uh, yesterday that I liked. I was doing a bunch of snowmans yesterday, and so, you know, we're going to do two dots for the eyes. I'm going to do a little, um, instead of this little curved smile here, I'm going to do... Oh, you can't even see that. Hold on. There you go. I'm going to do like a squiggle mouth for him um, on the, the new one. And then I'm going to give him four little buttons. And then the arms are optional. You can see how it looks without the arms. And then if you're like, I like the arms, then add the arms. No problem. But we want to cut that little hole. Not too big. Um, definitely, you know, like the outline or even a little bit smaller. So if you do the same amount as the outline, that's perfect. And I'm just going to make sure it's coming out all right. I always do that. I have like a little napkin, um, with some icing in it because I'm kind of practicing to make sure that it's coming out all right. So above this nose here, do so you can either outline a circle and fill it in, or you can squeeze until you have the right width that you would like for that dot. I kind of like squeeze and then sort of like spiral. And then if I need to, I use the tip of my icing bag or my toothpick to kind of get it into that perfect circle shape that I want. And since we're doing dots, why don't we just go ahead and do the little buttons as well. I put two on the middle part and then two on the bottom part. Okay, once you do that, I'll show you the little mouth part. So, you can either just do a little, little straight line for that mouth, or what I'm going to do is sort of squiggle it and still kind of give them a little side smile, but I think it looks cute. And I actually got this idea from my shower curtain. Uh, we have like a little Christmas shower curtain and there's like all these cute little snowmen on it and they have this sort of like squiggly smile that I thought was adorable. But I'll just show you what I'm going to do here and you can decide what you would like to do. Like that. You can do that and you can do just a little straight side smile. If you like how it looks without the arms, then your cookie is done. If you like how it looks with the arms, you can go ahead and add them. Um, we just go somewhere on the middle of his body here. We do a straight line, straight line, and then a V. So kind of like that snowflake. So if you like the way it looks, you can do two lines from the middle and then kind of coming down a little bit to the top part of his bottom layer. Just do straight line. And then you go that little V. Little stick arms. And then he's done. And he looks so cute. So 
so nice nicely done we are almost done we got one more cookie and it's it's almost done too so we're finishing off this here mug so the rest of it is done remember if it's a little bit like exploding um if you didn't get it the first time this would be the time to kind of like wipe it off scrape it off with your toothpick here but mine's good it dried and you can't even tell so it's good all right last part here we want to do this little like whipped cream effect so to do that um we're all done with all the other details and so we can cut a bigger hole in this thick white so make sure you're grabbing the thick white that has a one on it and then don't be afraid to cut a pretty good amount off so like I cut off this much and then my tip is about that wide just for reference um, so, we are going to go, starting at the bottom, you're going to squeeze, 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 squeeze as you move to the right, then come up, go to the left, to the right, to the left, and then kind of like pull it out. We're doing a lot of, like, it's the same kind of technique as the carrot. You're squeezing and then you boop, kind of pull it out. If you need to do another layer, if you want to, that's fine. Give it a little bit of definition. That's our whipped cream. And you can even, if you would like, add some of those sort of snowy sprinkles to it. Kind of give it a little, a little sparkle. There we go. Yay! That's it. Okay. That is it, y'all. We are completely done. Let's just make sure. So we've got that. We have our snowman. We have our tree. And we have our snowflake. I don't even know if those are all in the picture, but... Um, Thank you so much. We are done. I hope you had fun. Thank you for joining me. Uh, it's always so much fun. As you can see, I'm just straight cheesing because I love decorating cookies. I love teaching how to de decorate cookies. Um, so I hope you had fun as well. Um, a couple of things to note. If you would like to use your icings, I recommend just putting them in a Ziploc bag. Um, or Tupperware and if you want to make some cookies you can use the icing they'll be good for another two weeks and then your um, cookies go ahead and put them in your bakery box let them sit like that overnight or at least for 12 hours to dry and if you don't eat them within the next two to three days then go ahead and put them in a cellophane bag or a ziploc bag or a Tupperware just to keep them airtight um, I did for the Thanksgiving class, I actually did leave my cookies out for a whole week uh, in the box with no bag and I brought them to my family and my family said they tasted awesome. So, if, you know, you don't necessarily have to put them in the Ziploc, it just makes them a little bit more fresh. Uh, but most people eat them within a few days anyway, so it's like, it's not really necessary. You can just keep them in the bakery box. Um, but if you do have any questions, just let me know. Um, we, I'm going to be posting the YouTube video tonight if you want to rewatch it or whatever. Uh, it'll be available like probably by like midnight or early morning. And then I will send you the link. Uh, if you want a door prize, I will send you those discount codes to your email. And then if you would like to sign up for my email newsletter, uh, you can do that on my website so you can stay tuned for all of the upcoming classes that I have, uh, including that Royal Icing class in January. So again, thank you so much and I hope you have a great night. Enjoy your cookies. Let me know if you need anything, if you have any questions. Okay, good night. And I'm about to end it. So.